This is the sound check. Well, actually, no. These are not the sound checks you are looking for. Move along. Misa Tinkin, this sound check is Pudu. I am Darth Soundcheck. Darth Soundcheck? I don't know. And mine was bad. No, I just tried piecing two. Th- I, you guys said Star Wars Soundcheck. That works. That works, yeah. I'll buy that for a dollar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. This is the Cross Gen Podcast. Um, and welcome. I'm Walt, and I'm joined by my two little Padwans. Well, Darth AJ. Well, you're not that little anymore, dude, but okay. Eli. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? Thirsty. Yes, I know. We just finished having lunch, and we forgot to pour drinks, so uh, my bad on us, right? So we are going to do this podcast rather parched, if you don't mind. So anyway, part two of our in-depth discussion of whether Jar Jar Binks is Darth Plagueis, or rather is Jar Jar Binks the greatest Sith Lord of all time. I never said the greatest, but okay. Better than Darth Nihilus. I don't know about that. Better than Darth Plagueis. Better than Darth Bane. Maybe. Darth Vader. Nope. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Vitate, the Sith Emperor. Ooh, Vitate. I, I know very him. little about him, but I know enough. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what do you think? We finally got to see the video that um, AJ was talking about in the last episode. And I, so we can give credit properly to the video. It's a YouTube video called Jar Jar Binks, an evil Sith mastermind theory. And it comes from Lone Star. And... um this video came out about five years ago. It's about, what, 14 minutes long? Yep. And it came out before Force Awakens. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of conjecture and theory that has since been disproven because we've already gotten the sequel trilogy. But it uh, is plausible in some sorts. <laughs> I could definitely see a story about him. I'm just saying a story about Darth Binks. Well, here's the thing, though. They've kind of wrapped up Jar Jar's story with yeah. the whole... What, what was that book he was in? Aftermath? Yes, there you go. But Where if there was... was... A street performer, a clown, a mime, a what? dude. You guys, I think I know. I think I know. I finally, I finally understand now. The true power of Jar Jar Binks. I do. I think I know what's going on here. Okay. I really do. I never pegged you guys for conspiracy theorists. This is the only uh, look. This is the only one I'll give kind because there is a bare bones argument to be made here. Okay, so why don't we talk about the video and the arguments that it make, and then we can either say okay, we think it's true, or okay, it's totally crazy. <laughs> so what's the first? What's the first argument that the the video said okay so first off it's the physical feats he's performed Hmm. normally when you do like a 10 foot somersault in the air you're i you're you're more or less you're like a jedi well here's the thing it's his it's his race because he's we've never seen another gungan do that ever we've never seen a gungan decide to go into water have we not really. We've only seen the Gungans once. I mean, we've seen them underwater, but they weren't doing anything. They were just kind of chastising Jar Jar. Yeah. Right? And then, oh, by the way. Saw Jar Jar in Clone Wars. 
Yeah, but, but even still, that's his race. He's he's an amphibian. Yeah, we don't like know how his muscles are. But we've never seen one of his race do that either. But we mm-hmm. haven't really seen much of his race, period. Yeah. The only time it was that big battle, but it was on land, and it didn't require them to do much but just ride on those weird horsey thingies and Bruh, throw those blue balls all over the place. He's literally like a frog. That's basically him. He could do his weird froggy things and you can he's an amphibian that's what they do i guess right yeah i mean you can make the case that he's got frog legs i mean he is technically a frog okay well, well when you put it in context with these frog. other things it seems a little more likely okay but so yeah. the video makes makes the point to say that hey the dude has jedi like um I'm not going to say reflexes, but he has attributes that a, a Jedi would have physically, which means jumping up 20. Now, there was the other thing where they were constantly talking about the scene in Naboo, right? Yes. So during the battle with between the battle droids and the Gungans, <clears throat> He's seen, you know, in the movie, he bumbles around and he takes out a few droids with him and he takes down a tank, too. This is attributed, according to Mr. Lone Star here, a fighting style. And as we know, Jedi fighting styles are based on real world, like, uh, not katas, but like, you know, it's like disciplines. Uh, disciplines. disciplines, yes. And the one he claims that Jar Jar employs is the drunken master, where you make yourself look like an idiot, but in reality, you're dishing out all the damage, which is basically what he does throughout that battle. I mean, okay. I'll give you this. Eli, you want to take this one? (laughs) It's kind of similar. So he did show like comparisons, did he not? Right? He did. I'm just saying, he may be a skilled fighter, but he's definitely not Jedi-worthy or Sith-worthy. At least hmm. far, at least in that context, quote-unquote. I unquote. mean... A Gungan assassin. So he, he showed different... He, he took the different styles of Drunken Master and the forms and the stances and stuff like that and, and kind of went on a side-by-side comparison with some of the stuff that Jar Jar Binks was doing on that battlefield. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I I could probably take, you know, a picture of somebody walking and and say that that ma- mashes with like wushu, <laughs> or or you know, jeet kune do or something like that. I, it's it's a little, that's a little far fetched for me, just a little bit. I mean. Are we saying Jar Jar Binks is the next coming of Jackie Chan? <laughs> it, it, okay. Well, all right. Let's let's assume that he is a drunken a drunken master fighter, a drunken drunken. I I can't I can't even put the words to put together <laughs> with it. You know what I'm saying? Jar Jar Binks being. A master at drunken fighting, drunken boxing is is just. I don't know. I I felt like the guy was reaching just a little bit on that one. I got that feeling too, but still. I mean, like I said, you can kind of make the case that you know, like he 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 pointed to a stance where it's like you're you're kind of readying yourself, and he applied that to him jumping into the water. Well, you know, you kind of have to do that if you're going to do a jump you know what i'm saying so (laughs) that's fair that's fair and then now i i will agree with him on this point okay it does seem a little over the top that with all the bumbling that jar jar binks did in that battle he was able to easily dispatch some of the the warriors and the and the machinery, the tanks and stuff like that, and and it just seemed 
it wasn't random. Like he was doing like headshots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I will give I mean, what do you guys think about that? Again, I I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's there. <laughs> Eli, your thoughts on this? Jar Jar is a skilled fighter. I'll give him I that. can't believe we're actually saying that. <laughs> that, that is just he is, that is the most ridiculous <laughs> statement. Now, I'm not saying you're you're ridiculous. I'm saying just putting Jar Jar Binks and skilled fighter in the same sentence doesn't make sense it really doesn't i i just that's why i have such a hard time looking at that and saying yeah he's a drunken boxing master because it it you can't i jar jar binks a skilled fighter yes. <laughs> wow yeah, I, I think so i think so wow that is that's wow there's not too much evidence but i believe that he is hiding something at least Okay. Next item on the docket. <laughs> he went in depth, uh, the guy in the video, about a particular scene when they were jumping down off of like a sort of bridge thing. Oh yeah, when they um, when they took they took over Naboo and and cut Fre- communications. Yeah, and they uh, they freed. Uh, they were trying to rescue that old guy. And Amidala. Oh, yeah. She was there, too. Yeah. I, I'm, that, I'm focused on the old guy. Yeah. They've cut communications. That can only mean one thing. <laughs> Invasion. <laughs> I love that guy for that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, Amidala was there, too. Yeah. That, that explanation, <laughs> I feel, was stretching it a little bit. Because that could be attributed to, like, some camera. Yeah, they just messed up. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like the um, the looking. thing that we saw in Angel, yeah. <laughs> or the guy you clearly see, it's a fight scene, the worst fight scene in history, mind you, right? <laughs> Where the guy that Angel's fighting doesn't even know how to fight, but somehow he's kicking Angel's butt. Yeah. But in that scene, we see the actual cameraman taking fil- filming the scene. In the scene. Yeah, is that like the very edge of the camera in the other frame? But he's pretty visible. Yeah. He's it's not it's not even like Gene's guy in The Mandalorian where he was hiding out in the background, you know. Yeah. Um he was pretty you can see the camera. Yeah, like you can if see you the pause guy. it at the right point. You can see how he's holding the camera, yeah. his hand on the camera. Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> you yeah. even need to pause it. Yeah, but I'm saying if you really wanted well, to see how bad it yeah, was. It, and it, it is kind of quick because the first time I saw it, I didn't see it. He saw it. So saw it. You saw it too? Yeah, he saw No, he's the one that pointed Oh, you're the out, one that I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I actually wasn't looking at it because I was looking at how bad the fight was, <laughs> you know. So you have that. So, yeah, the whole thing, it could be something like that, right? Yeah. Where it's just they, a continuity error yeah. in yeah. terms of stuff. The the, so, the soda can in Game of Thrones, <laughs> or the yeah. coffee the coffee cup in Game oh, of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was like a what was it? A Starbucks? I think so. So you know how Game of Thrones is like set in like the medieval ish yeah. times, right? There was one scene where viewers pointed out that there was a Starbucks coffee cup mm-hmm. in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> right right in front of Daenerys while she was sitting. So while that was the scene when um they were they were talking about how John was such a good king or something like that. And oh, she was she in the was, background. Oh, they were convincing her to join him or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and so she's in the background having some Starbucks while they're talking about <laughs> King of the World or whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's pretty bad. Next item on the docket: Jar Jar Binks somehow convincing the Senate to give up democracy. That was now this one. You this one? Come on now. So what do Jedi do to do Jedi mind tricks? <laughs> oh wait, it's normally a hand gesture. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> and what is he doing half the time? He's trying to convince someone to do something. 
He's making a hand gesture. Sith share the same attributes as Jedi do. So, and considering that he's making all these substantial changes to the plot, hey, it could be force mind manipulation. That is so outlandish on every level. <laughs> How though? Okay, wait. So the drunken Kata is less is less is less feasible, but this isn't. No, th- that was more feasible. This just isn't or more feasible, feasible at all. How is it not? It's just not feasible at all. How anybody, not? Anybody makes hand gestures when they're trying to convince somebody. He's doing it right okay, now. Okay, but again, as like knowing that he's a bumbling idiot, quote unquote, and he's just able to convince so, the wait, Senate so to give Palpatine more power. Anybody can convince somebody. Jar Jar Binks with the right, with the right. If you know, just because he's a bumbling idiot doesn't know doesn't mean he he doesn't know how to talk to people. I think it's because he's a bumbling idiot that he was manipulated by Palpatine into saying it. Mm, you can make that case. Because Palpatine seems to be like a pretty shady guy that knows how to manipulate behind the scenes kind of stuff. You know? Mm. So. And he probably told. All right. There's some tug there. There's some tug there. Palpatine said, use your hands a lot. It, it looks more senatorial. Now, I'm, I w- am going to say this. I am going to say this. And, and you can make the argument. I think I just made the argument against it also. And, but he made an interesting point. Why in the world is this quote-unquote bubbling, bumbling idiot, right, have so much power? Like, he's, mean- he's made a general in the army in that first battle, right? Which is weird, and he's just he's just general idiot, right? And then he's made a senator of an entire planet of an entire planet. I mean, that is now that's a good point that he brings up. Now the only thing is, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Maybe Palpatine installed him as a palper. We've heard we've heard a similar phrase because of what's going on in the United States, right? Yeah. So Trump has his Trumpers, Palps has his Palpers, right? So maybe what he did was he installed the lackey there to ensure that everything that he wants done gets done. That's the only thing I can say. So you're saying song. there's a possibility of collusion? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you. I'll hold on to that one. Collusion on Palpatine's behalf. I'll hold on to that one. Stop the steal. I'll hold on to that one. Mr. Mr. Palpatine, stop the steal. Which is crazy, but whatever. So, I mean, but there's there's parallels, right? You know, our, our president chooses to put in political appointees that will basically do whatever he says whatever and so palpatine hey maybe that guy saw star wars and said hey i could do that <laughs> you know so okay. i'm just saying that i i think i think that could you can explain it that way that that's why he's a senator because palpatine figured he's a fool and you know he'll do whatever whatever i says now it, i have an idea for that Tell me, tell me. No, no, not yet. No, no, not tell yet. me, tell me. Not yet. No, no, tell me, tell me. Every, you have to do everything. it now because we're going to be moving on. Tell me, tell me. No, next... it's not just for this. It's tying everything. Oh, okay. Oh, this is like, like an overlapping theory? Well, most of it. Overarching theory? The next piece of evidence, or rather, you know, potential evidence. As far as episodes two and three go... Anakin begins to develop a growing mistrust and pretty much disrespect for the Jedi Order. He was a kid when he first met Jar Jar. And what was the one thing he was doing throughout all of Phantom Menace? He was always second-guessing Qui-Gon. He was always, you know, openly uh, at him, 
showing him disrespect well, not for that. tends Quai- to leave an imprint. Qui Gon didn't like him very much. Yeah, that's true. Qui Quai- Gon was only that only made his job easier because he's a bumbling idiot, quote unquote. So what? He pledged his life to Qui Gon because Qui Gon saved him. Yes, because he wants an end. Anakin was influenced by Jar Jar Binks, and that made him the Sith Lord. The it ultimate planted, Sith Lord. it planted the seeds. It planted the seeds of Anakin's development. Jar Jar the farmer. <laughs> uh, Eli, you want to respond to that one? I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you talk about that one. It's, it's not plausible at all. Why? Because, I mean, first off, as a kid, who would listen to 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 a bumbling idiot like Jar Jar Binks? Especially when Anakin was so in awe of the Jedi. Yeah, uh, Anakin was just not fond of the way they thinks of the way they did things because you know, at, over time, when you're doing the same thing. And at first, you think it's going to be so incredible. When you start to do it, it's not what you expect. That's what happened there. Not Jar Jar. Not Jar Jar. But there is there is still something Jar Jar is hiding. So I'll, that AJ's thinking of a response. I can see it in his face. <laughs> it, those gears are grinding right now. No, that's that's a fair point. That's fair. All right, let's move on to the next point. Is there a um, next point? Yeah, I think there's one more. And this is kind of the tying up everything. So given all of this stuff, and given the actual name of the movie, The Phantom Menace, Palpatine was always in this, in this thread of movies working with a co-conspirator. Jedi, I mean Jedi. Sith always come in twos. Given all of these things combined, the drunken foxing, <laughs> the <laughs> controlling the Senate for Palpatine's gain. You said it yourself. They were likely co-conspirating. Well, I think co-conspirating in a in a one-sided way. I think I think Jar Jar, if we take it on its face, was too dumb to realize that he yeah. was being manipulated. Yeah. All right. Which draws parallels to some real world events right now. <laughs> Altogether, that's the makings for a either Palpatine's master who is able to much more flawlessly embed himself in the system. Or rather, you know, our, you know, the story, uh, the characters around him. Oh, no. Or uh, just not an equal playing field, but, you know, just someone who, a Sith who's working with him, like the apprentice, I guess. But okay. even then. Nah. So let me ask this question then. If, if we say that's true. Then how does that work with the the Sith's self applied rule of the rule of two? Palpatine's always been fast and loose with the rule of two. So it's really been the rule of three for him. Three, four, five, six. I mean, you look at well, Sith Assassin, well, yeah, that was his one. Then you had Dooku. Eh, did away with him. Then you had Anakin. You look at the comic books, which were canon. He had Vader pitted against all these other dudes to see who would take his place. A. Right, but they weren't necessarily Sith Lords. They Fair were, enough. You have Sith Acolytes, right? And you have Sith Disciples that are not really Sith. They're kind of like Force users that are dark and bad. But either way, the whole thing is that there's only two. No more, no less. It is the hard rule. Also, I present to you the Inquisitors. Which were more 
they weren't Sith lords. They were more Sith footmen. Still, so there's it's only supposed like, to be two Sith. But they are trained also in the ways of the dark side of the Force. Right. So you, they're not necessarily Sith. They're just dark force users, dark side users. Wait, 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 right? Wait, wait. Vitate, right? Mm-hmm. His his physical form, his the person who he was taking control of, wasn't he a government official? Like he owns, he had he had the internal emperor empire, right? Yeah, he was the emperor of the empire. So. <laughs> You think Jar Jar Binks is Vitate? I mean, he's <laughs> practically Vitate. Oh my god! Vitate oh, was is the body jumper. Vitate was like, uh, he was the emperor. This so is not could, me. This is him. Now. You can. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> he <You're> disavowing <laughs> this <laughs> because I only I only I only vote Plagueis, and the video voted for Snoke. That right. Jar Jar was Snoke, but yeah. I'm also saying Plagueis could be Snoke. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm lost. <laughs> now I'm well. Okay, of course this this video was done w- way before the the sequel trilogy was finished. Uh, I just got a headache just right. Now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So. I'm lost here. Um, he was masterminding. Jar Jar Binks was masterminding the whole thing. Yes. With Palps as the the fall the the guy. He's basically the Wizard of Oz, and then Jar Jar Binks is the guy behind the curtain. Yes. And oh my god. I just I okay. I I have a heart. I will say this, right? Lone Star, who's the who's the author of this video, did make a very, very good point. In that it does seem like Jar Jar Banks was destined for a bigger role. Especially when you also consider oh, I completely forgot about this. You look at Yoda's role in episode five. He was made out to be not a bumbling idiot, but, you know, he was supposed to be like the the red herring kind of character where it's a like kooky I hermit. Appear, yeah, you appear as a kooky hermit, but you end up being the master of whatever discipline, whatever. And the sequel trilogy was supposed to be a mirror of the original trilogy. So where would Jar Jar Binks fit? Oh, wait, he would probably fit in the role of where Yoda was supposed to be. But how about this? What if Jar Jar Binks was the mastermind behind the Emperor? That's the whole point I'm trying to make. Oh. No, but the way I'm thinking this, this is so outlandish, right? Can't be more outlandish than Jar Jar Binks <laughs> being a Sith Lord. I'll tell you that. Okay. Vitate, did, he died way back when, right? But what if he didn't? And he lived on as a Sith ghost. Well, wasn't he already a Sith ghost? But well, he is... was a, a spirit, but so spirits can't die Not unless you force it to where it belongs. Then it's gone. But what if it didn't go to where it belongs? And that well, obviously... I never played the Old Republic games, so I wouldn't know how definitive his end was. Yeah, well, and, it'll be interesting because remember we saw we we saw Altered Carbon, right? The TV show yeah. on, <clears throat> excuse me, on Netflix, right? But remember we also saw that the the anime, which was the prequel, right? <clears throat> In that one, they had the head of the what was it like the yakuza or something like that? That remember that there was that one guy yeah. who kept on, he, even though there was a there was. A, um, there was a system where succession, right? Yeah, but he kept on being the guy. He just dropped into different bodies. Yeah. So what you're yeah. saying is that Vitate hasn't shown himself to be Vitate. He's been Darth Bane, Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious. Well, you know what? Now that you suggest it, yeah, yeah, something like that. Remember the nun? What happened in the nun? Spoiler yeah. alert. 
the nun hops into a body before it, uh, it goes down into wherever it was supposed to go. I forgot, right? So yeah. in other words, they thought it was gone, but in actuality, they were probably living with the... Or no, no, no. Better example would be this. Remember in season 11 when they went to go see Lucifer for like the first time in how many, de- and how many years? Supernatural. Yeah. Rowena was about to slam him into the cage, but what did he do? He got cast to say yes and thus avoided getting slammed back in the cage. So you're saying it's a similar situation to that. Yeah. So Vatate hops between all the Sith Lords. In other words, he is practically all of the big bad, big bad Sith Lords, right? And then it reaches a point where he hops into Jar Jar. Jar Jar being, I mean, Vatate being the mastermind that he is after listen, living through, what, maybe a couple of thousand years? Easily millennia. Yeah. A millennia. He's been around for a long time. So he's learned a lot, especially since at first he was an emperor. He knows how to influence people without using the force. So what if he influences using the force? Yeah. He, what if he influences Palpatine to think that he's the mastermind, while in actuality he's the one pulling his strings? And then the aftermath. Vitate can hop through bodies, right? And it, it's not just death, and then you hop out, right? Yeah. Being seeing that, I mean, knowing that uh, whatever is going on, he practically set up the chaos with Jar Jar Binks being put into such a low position where he's being kicked around. That's when he hops out, leaving him to to basically die to rot, and he hops into somebody else. Snoke. Snoke, maybe, probably. But you see where I'm going, And right? then back to Darth Sidious. And then probably to Palpatine. Yeah. You understand? See, this it's whole thing would have worked better if they didn't bring back Palpatine. Yeah, that's... Because why would you go back into a deteriorating body? And, wait, wait. Well, but he yeah. was trying to get into Rey. But yet somehow just thought... Hey, a deteriorating body is better than a fully well, functional body. I, the problem was, and I, I think this is kind of, this is almost like a supernatural thing, right? Where you're you're invited. Where, well, he wanted her to kill him, and then he would transfer it. See, this is why Rise of no, Skywalker no, no, no. doesn't work, right? Because he wanted her to kill him so that she can then become the Sith Emperor and take his place, right? And then she said no. So then Kylo comes and he said, "Oh, you know what? Instead what I'll do is you guys don't kill me. I'll kill you and I'll drain all your energy and rebuild myself up." Now, what if Which makes no sense because he could have done that at the very beginning. Now, here's the Rey. thing. Here's the thing. What if he didn't hop into Palpatine? You know what I mean? What if he didn't hop into Palpatine? What if he stayed aside as somebody? So you're now making movies 10 through 12. No, we would have to discount 7 through 9 completely. Here's to work. He is a very, very outlandish theory. Even more outlandish than the one before, right? And I'm not saying that I told, that I no, believe in this, but this is like... Now. Yeah, I barely believe in this. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to find a plausible way for... Things to actually go down in the new trilogy. What if uh, Vitate wasn't the emperor, and the emperor was to drain their what? What was what was he draining? The force essence. Yeah, he was yeah. draining their force essence without realizing that Vitate would drain his essence, all bundled up together. So he was making a cash cow. Yeah, I. It's not my. It's obviously not my best theory. He being that like I'm, Rowena. <laughs> yeah, taking in all the souls. Yeah, and I'm guessing that would have been his main plan if Kylo hadn't screwed it up. But even still, it's not really plausible. If you were to discount nine, up till eight, Darth Plagueis would have worked really well. Did I? Did I not make 
a pl- a kind of plausible theory here? Not really. Sorry. <laughs> Tate is Jar Jar. No, yeah. I'd I'd rather just keep I that think, in legends. I think Jar Jar is just Jar Jar. Because imagine, like, and let me let me put things in perspective. Uh, so yes, Vitate, he's going and accumulating. Wow, yeah. So, how on earth would this guy is obviously stronger than ten supercharged Palpatines? How would they even begin to fight him? Well, the thing is, Ray would have to be through the roof powerful well, in order to even match him, Kylo included. They weren't fighting him. No, but if they were to fight him in a future thing, yeah, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying it's the, not the, very it'd plausible. be so steep. Yeah, well, the, the just, last trilogy wouldn't be very plausible, and that's why I said that. But. She would have just done what um what she did in the movie. She did a she basically did a soul bomb, right? Where she got all the power of the Jedi behind her to be Palpatine. That still wouldn't probably be enough. I mean, Vitate. versus someone who's lived for eons. Yeah. Okay. My okay. I I just want to make this point because this is instead of all what I said, which complicated a lot of things. My whole point is that Vitate set up everything, all of the movies, everything, so that they would lead up to that one point with Emperor and Rey. But you see, that's the logic I apply to the Darth Plagueis thing. Only it doesn't include nine. They screwed up the sweet the sequel trilogy. Yeah. That's that's just yeah. the basic thing. And you can't really work with that. You know what the the Lone Star video was very very entertaining. I will I will give it that. Um and it was and you know we also have the hindsight of of knowing what happens with the sequel trilogy. The guy when he made the video didn't I think maybe Force Awakens had come out. Maybe, right? No, that looked like... That was pre-Force Awakens? It looked like it. I'm not okay. it's too sure, though. Wait. So, oh. so you know, it's an entertaining video, but knowing what we know now... Yeah, obviously it, it doesn't it, work. It doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? But, like I said, he had the very, very interesting you know, position that... Jar Jar Binks was supposed to be a bigger character, and because, you know, everybody disliked the character of Jar Jar Binks so much that he had to diminish him in the next two movies. Because he does make a a really good point that um, uh, Darth Tyrannus, Count Dooku, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's it's also weird though, but because if you think about it this way though, if that was his intention, then why did he kill off Darth Maul in the first place? Especially now with the news that that was saying that he was saying that the his sequel trilogy would have featured Darth Maul as the main bad guy. Sequel oh, trilogy. That what? Been awesome. Yeah. Oh my god! What? George Lucas said in a, in an interview recently that his thought for a sequel trilogy would have involved Darth Maul. They are so stupid. J. I'm sorry, J. J. A- Abrams. You freaking suck. <laughs> you suck. All right, let's not get too. Yeah. Let's not. I know, I know, I know. But still, still. But see that. So then it doesn't up. make sense because if you were gonna do that. Then why didn't you um, why didn't you do that and set it up in the prequel trilogy, right? A, you probably shouldn't have killed off Darth Maul, or at least you shouldn't have done him the way that they did it. Because for a lot of people who's only seen the movies, they still think that Darth Maul is dead, yeah. right? So it, it's kind of weird to hear all that stuff afterwards. I guess is my my take. Yeah. What about this? Oh, here we what go. happened with Star Killer? No, that's that's another. That's non-canon. But what if Star Killer would not? Star Killer is an awesome character. I love him. He won't work in Star Wars canon. He is way overpowered. He's way OP. 
You want to know why? He is super OP. He took down a freaking Star Destroyer by himself in the game. Really? Now see that? Multiply that by like a million with Vitate. Yeah. Well, look at Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus. Yeah, that too. Yeah. That too. So Darth Nihilus isn't as strong as Vitate. But Star Killer is. He runs OP. pretty close. Not that close, though. If he can literally force eat an entire planet, that, that was that's Vitate. pretty close. No, no, that, that was wasn't. Nihilus. That well, was then Nihilus. Vitate buddy. did something like that, too. Yeah, Vitate he is, did is, something yeah. like that, too. But guess what? Nihilus can, too. So. Runs pretty close. Patate is still even more powerful. Yeah, but Star Killer is super OP for the Star Wars universe right now. And I, you know what? It, it doesn't make sense because if he can take down a Star Destroyer like that with ease, then he should have been able to beat well, Vader. And quite him. do it with ease. But he did it anyway. I, I've never seen Palpatine or Vader do any of that stuff. At least not in canon. Well, because that's the. I guess that's probably because they're in a more. Vader, mm. I, I don't know. It's it, Star Killer doesn't. I I love Star Killer. They would have to change his character so much to okay. get him to fit into canon. But what exactly happened with Star Killer? Let's just say he was. He here also now. died. He also died. How did he die? He was either a he's killed by Vader. Or B, he leaves him to live. It was something like that. I don't remember because the second, the second. Because I remember the good. second game, he dies, but he's also killed by himself. I definitely don't remember the second game because he gets killed by a clone of himself who works for Vader when he's about to again kill Vader. And then you're the clone afterwards, right? Yes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, now it's starting to come back. So you're dead. He done got himself perished. And the clone, right? So the clone is still alive. Well, the clone is... We don't know what the clone's doing. What's the clone doing? I mean, it still doesn't even work because... It's not canon anyway, so it doesn't matter. Rebels kind of set up how the rebellion formed. Yeah. So... And the whole point of his arc was that he uh, the formed the rebellion. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. This is going to sound very, 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 very outlandish. Star Wars gets very confusing. You know how, what's his face? The weird, I forgot his name. The the original Sith Lord. It wasn't Vitate. It was eons before him. Um, it's not Darth Bane. Darth not Bane, Bane is known for a rule of two. Even before him. Way before We're him. We're talking about... Oh, I it's, don't, it's I don't remember known. the, the very first Ty- Sith Lord. Typhon. It was, when it, they, when they, no, when they left... Um, no, I, I mentioned this. Remember we were talking about Mando, Mando, I think, with Baby Yoda, and I brought up the... It, it was in a different podcast, just so you know. Um, original Sith. The first Sith Lord was Ajunta Pal. According to legends, because remember, legends no longer kind of exists. Oh, you know what? No, 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 you no. Know? It wasn't him. It was um, Sith Pure Blood. What? I don't remember who oh, it was. Because the Sith actually were a race before they were like a cult slash organization. I, I That's what Pure Blood means. I don't remember. I it's don't not remember. Marco Ragna Marco Ragnos. I think it was. Yeah, because I remember, I remember reading Darth up. Darth Revan. On this. No, I remember reading up on this thing. There was this, like this warlord. Darth Vitate. He was a, like a warlord, and he was like, he's basically what started up the whole idea of being a Sith. Yeah, that's that's a legends thing, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything in terms of the beginning of of everything is, um, legends. Legends, right now. So what if Vitate? Was the dark side? No, nope. the dark side as an entity already exists. The sun. The sun. But what if Vatate is the sun? You'd need to really get your ducks in a row for that. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see this. Well, Marco Marco sun. Ragnos was the guy that took all over after Ajunta Paul. So, and supposedly he was he was. If you're going to say that he was kind of like a warlord, 
he seems to be the one because he ruled the Sith Empire for like over a hundred years. The Sith Empire? Yeah. I'm pretty sure there wasn't even... And he was also one of the more vicious Sith Lords. You know what? Then it was probably him then. And he also gained the ability to turn into a first a Force Ghost. So he was like the first to do it. Marco Ragnos. Which again, not canon. Because everything, everything in terms of the beginnings of both the Jedi and the Sith um, was thrown out the window when Disney bought it. Oh, yeah. And get this. Remember when Kylo Ren was looking at Darth Vader's helmet? Worn, worn out helmet? Kylo Ren? So? So, what if Batate also, during that, this is also outlandish, and it doesn't go well with what I said before. Or it might. He possessed that item. And See, I don't like that whispered. idea. I like the idea of Darth Vader being that guy because it makes more sense uh, that it be Darth Vader. How? How? It's his helmet and he died in it. Ghost <laughs> rules. Technically, he really didn't die in the helmet. Yeah. The helmet okay. Was you, <laughs> you get what I'm <laughs> saying. Yeah, but still, I mean, not... he was the helmet was close, but it wasn't on him when he died. <laughs> He wore it when he burned. Wasn't the lightsaber good enough? <laughs> no. Still, I I just don't see. I don't I don't see Darth Vader being a ghost, um, because following ghost rules, he basically had nothing left. Luke Skywalker practically finished off the job. But except he was a ghost at the very end of Return of the Jedi. Oh frick! <laughs> oh, still he wasn't in the helmet. Well, I mean, what if let's just make this <laughs> this okay. Okay. What what if Vitate had possessed the helmet and he was the one whispering into Kylo Ren, telling him to do all the crap that he was doing, and then that's what led up to Palpatine, or we could just forget about Rise of Skywalker and never for, never freaking talk about it again. I'd and rather just, just forget about Vitate at this point. And, all right. Yeah, we'll we'll end this conversation on that note. So, um, very interesting video by Lone Star. Very interesting video. Uh, So much so that it spawned an entire 40-something minute episode from (laughs) us, right? Vitate. From a 14-minute video by by the guy. Vitate Binks. Vitate Binks, please. Yes. Jar Jar Banks is just Jar Jar Banks. He, that's it. Or was he, he supposed not, to be? He is not a Sith Lord. If he is, then Sith Lords everywhere are cringing right now. <laughs> so, either or either that or is the biggest con job ever. But <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I that would be a great story, but it's not true. Yeah, All right. Fine. Well, anyway, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and listening into our little podcast here. Um, please remember, if you enjoy us rambling on about Sith Lords and Jar Jar Binks, uh, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review our show, uh, preferably on iTunes. That way, we know what we're doing right. We, you can tell us what we're doing wrong, and we'll figure out something in between. So. Until next time, Eli, AJ, and this is Walt. May uh, our paths cross again. Oh, gosh. You got to work on that. Yeah. We really got to work on that. Batate Binks. All right. Later, people. Darth Plagueis. Batate. No. Binks. No. Binks. No. Jar Jar. No. <laughs> <laughs>